my name is Kristen May and I am the Environmental Education Coordinator for Friends of Coastal South Carolina. One of my main jobs is to take students out onto our Low Country National Wildlife Refuges and our National Forests, but that's not possible right now, so I have decided that I want to bring these beautiful and important places to you. Um, I want to teach you about them, I want to talk about their importance, and I want to talk about the important work that is still going on there. I'm hoping that these lessons can be for students of all ages. Up first, I want to talk about the nesting shorebirds at Cape Romaine National Wildlife Refuge. Before we start talking about shorebirds specifically, let's talk about birds in general. What makes a bird a bird? Well, the first thing that I think of when I think of birds is feathers. All birds have feathers, and in fact, birds are the only animal in the entire world that have feathers. The second thing is birds all have wings, whether the bird can fly or not. Birds all have some sort of beak or bill. They're shaped differently depending on what the bird eats. All birds lay eggs. Um, birds are warm-blooded and most birds have hollow bones to be able to make their skeleton lighter because they need to be lighter um, to be able to fly. Shorebirds are obviously a type of bird. They have all the different characteristics that we just discussed, but shorebirds have some special characteristics and adaptations that make them unique and that set them apart from other types of birds. Shorebirds live in open habitats, which means they don't like areas with trees and with a canopy, with tree cover. Um, they like open places like the beach shore. Like all birds, shorebirds have feathers, but shorebird feathers are specially colored to allow them to camouflage to the areas that they live on the beach shore and in the salt marsh. Also, several different shorebird species need to migrate very, very long distances. So they need long pointed feathers to allow them to be able to fly those long distances and also to fly pretty fast. The fastest shorebird ever recorded was going 60 miles an hour. Shorebirds have beaks that are adapted to find and eat different types of invertebrates that you can find out on the beach or in the salt marsh. And depending on the shape of the shorebird's beak and how long it is, it actually gives you some clues of what that shorebird's diet consists of. Another cool thing about shorebirds is shorebirds have an oil gland near their tail feathers. And when shorebirds tidy up their feathers with their beaks, we call this preening, they actually spread this oil out on to their other feathers. Now, why would they want to do this? Well, do oil and water mix? Absolutely not. So having that oil coating allows their feathers to repel water um, and this helps keeps their feathers drier and also helps keep them warm. Like all other birds, shorebirds lay eggs, but shorebirds lay their eggs on the beach. So their eggs are usually speckled with some blacks and some browns and some tans to camouflage those eggs with the sand and with the broken shells on the beach. The last thing I want to talk about is a lot of times if you're watching shorebirds out on the beach, you might notice that they have really long legs and if you look at their feet, they also have really long toes. And these long legs and toes helps the shorebirds stabilize or balance themselves out on the beach, out on the sand. As we discussed, a lot of shorebirds spend most of their lives out on the beach shore. And who else enjoys the beach? I know I do, and a lot of other humans do as well. But when we go out and enjoy the beaches of the low country, especially the beaches out on Cape Romaine, we need to be mindful of other animals that need that environment to be able to survive. Here in South Carolina, we have three different species of shorebirds that nest on our beaches from about March through August. We have Willets, American Oyster Couchers, and Wilson's Plovers. 
On Thursday and Friday of this past week, Friends of Coastal South Carolina assisted DNR and Fish and Wildlife with some time critical preparations to help protect shorebird nesting sites out on Cape Romaine National Wildlife Refuge. This preparation happens at the beginning of every single shorebird nesting season, usually starting in about mid-March or April. Members of South Carolina DNR and the Fish and Wildlife Service go out onto the barrier islands of Cape Romaine to post signs and to rope off areas that are common for shorebirds to nest and to raise their hatchlings. So now that you've learned a little overview about shorebirds and the ones that nest on Cape Romaine, I am going to give you an inside look to all the hard work that goes into protecting these shorebirds and their nesting sites out on Cape Romaine National Wildlife Refuge. When you work on a refuge that is acres of salt marsh and barrier islands, it always involves a boat and it usually involves waking up pretty early. The night before you have to make sure all of the equipment you need is organized, ready, and in the boats. If you forget anything, well, sometimes it's over an hour boat ride away to go back and get it. Once all of the equipment is organized and ready to go, it's time to get the boats to the landing, into the water, and only after all of that is it time to head out onto the refuge. To get to our first island, it's about an hour boat ride from Garris Landing in Awanda. I never get sick of this boat ride. Through this entire ride, we are traveling through Cape Romaine and Class 1 Wilderness. Every time I ride through Cape Romaine, I always see just a small fraction of the animals that call this refuge home. Dolphins, bald eagles, seabirds, shorebirds. I have sometimes even seen manatees and loggerhead sea turtles. After about an hour, we get to our first barrier island. There is no dock, so we anchor our boats and form an assembly line to unload all of the equipment that we need. And only then is it finally time to start putting up signs and roping off areas for the nesting shorebirds. Step one is to dig postals. This is done via an auger or a post hole digger. Once the post holes have been dug, we drive in the stakes. It's important that these stakes are driven in very well because these signs will be up through August and they need to withstand winds and storms. While one team is digging holes and driving in stakes, another team is going around to attach the signs to the stakes. Stakes are spaced out between 20 and 25 paces. So let's double check the amount of paces between these two signs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Perfect. After all the stakes are driven in and the signs are posted, it is time to rope and flag the area. String is put up in between each sign to rope off the protected nesting area. Flagging tape is then tied to the string to bring extra attention that this area is closed, off limits to all public and part of a sensitive wildlife habitat. After all of this, it's time to pack the boats back up with all of our equipment and then repeat that whole process on two more barrier islands. After each island was successfully posted, we headed back to Garris Landing to unload, wash off the boats, and head home.
We posted these nesting boundaries at three barrier islands, North Cape Island, South Cape Island, and Lighthouse Island. These locations were chosen because of the historically high density of shorebird nesting and human visitation. However, shorebirds use many areas outside of the places that we posted. The density of nesting oyster catchers, Wilson's plovers, and willets in Cape Romaine is so high that if we were to post and rope off every single beach area in Cape Romaine where shorebird nesting had been found, there would be no visitation at all allowed on Cape Romaine National Wildlife Refuge beaches. Posting is done to keep out any pedestrian traffic and to provide an area where shorebirds will experience a minimal amount of disturbance. However, shorebirds do nest outside of these posted areas and the nests outside of the areas are still protected by law. So please be mindful of shorebird activity when you go visit Cape Romaine beaches. When most people think of bird eggs, they think of eggs laid in a nest up in a tree. However, most shorebirds don't build a nest at all. Most simply scrape around on the sand and in the broken shells and lay their eggs directly on the beach. Shorebirds nest alone instead of in a group or a colony so that they're better able to hide the individual nests from predators. Also, their eggs and their hatchlings are colored to blend in with the sand and the broken shells. This means that humans visiting beaches need to be extra mindful of shorebird activity to make sure that they are not disturbing any potential nesting sites. Now that you are armed with new knowledge about nesting shorebirds in Cape Romaine, here are a few things that you can do to help us protect shorebirds. Do not chase shorebirds, even when they are outside of a posted area, because chasing shorebirds will make them fly and make them waste their energy. Shorebirds need this energy to rest, to lay their eggs, to take care of their hatchlings, to find food, and to eventually migrate on from Cape Romaine. Do not set up or play games near posted areas or in areas where you see a lot of shorebird activity. And another very important piece of information, no dogs or other pets are allowed on any of Cape Romaine's beaches. Even if your dog is very well behaved, even if it's leashed, shorebirds see a dog as a predator and a dog's presence can cause extreme stress and disturbance to shorebirds. Any kind of disturbance to shorebirds can make them abandon their nests, which will result in egg and chick death. The last thing that you can do to help us protect shorebirds is simply to spread the word. Spread what you have learned about shorebirds. Even though Cape Romaine is 37,000 acres and home to the highest density of Wilson's plovers and nesting oyster catchers in all of South Carolina, some people that have lived in this area their entire lives still don't know about Cape Romaine's vital role in the protection of shorebirds. If you would like to do even more to help us protect shorebirds, I have an artistic service project for students. This year, several of my earth stewards were going to complete a service project to design shorebird nesting signs. Unfortunately, with school closures, we didn't quite get these designs finished. So this is where all of you can come in. On our Google Drive, the link will be in the video description, I will post a set of rules, instructions, and guidelines for designing your own shorebird sign. Take the information that you learned from this video, research some more, get more information, and design a sign that you think would draw people's attention to want to protect these areas and protect shorebirds. You might design a sign that looks a little something like this. We think it would be great to replace our current white signs with your designs. Beautiful designs that will grab people's attention and make them aware that Cape Romaine is a protected area for several important shorebird species. Species that we wanna make sure that we do our part to help and to protect. After you're done with your design, you can scan and email it to me, you can mail it to our P.O. Box, or you can come visit me at the Seaweed Visitor Center and drop it off once the Seaweed Visitor Center is back open for visitation. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot, had a little bit of fun. I hope you're inspired to make a shorebird protection sign, and I will see you again next week for another lesson that will bring our refuges and forests to you.